Around a third of emissions on the rock are from traffic. The Transport Ministry wants to change this. It's been trying to change it for a while. This new plan focuses on prioritizing pedestrians above all, followed by cyclists and then public transport. The aim is to make private vehicles the last option for people to use and get them to be active. Creating cycle lanes isn't easy. Our roads are narrow and heavily congested. This plan explores the areas which can be converted. So in terms of cycling lanes, it's going to happen in a few weeks' time. It's going to be a pop-up version. That means that it'll be a temporary situation at first, and then over time it'll become a permanent cycle lane. And the first one that's going to be installed is this one here at Bayside Road. And it's going to look a little bit like this, but with nicer weather. The plan is an extension to the Sustainable Traffic and Parking Plan published five years ago. Well, this in fact is an extension of Chapter 6 of the STTP. Remember, the STTP discussed everything from cars, buses, cycling, walking. What this um, plan does is it concentrates on Chapter 6, which is the walking and cycling parts of it, and expands it to a, a very big degree. At this stage, we're talking about concepts, plans, ideas. Uh, isn't it a bit late in the day? I mean, doesn't it feel like we've heard all of this before? Uh, ideas about making cycling safer and putting it into the minds of people. Uh, we're a few years down the line now, aren't we? Well, this is the first time that you've actually seen concepts of actual cycle lanes, I and mean, this has never happened before. So, some, as I said in my presentation, some of these are concepts. When I say concepts, it means they may need to be developed further and they may, they may need to be tweaked whether we use certain different types of cones, you know, what infrastructure we need, whether we choose to use a lane, a, a traffic lane or not, um, you know, how much parking we may need to lose in some areas or not. So when you say concept, it's because it, it's live, but there are a few of these schemes which are already, you know, set in stone, so to speak. In order to encourage people to walk, the plan envisages wayfinder signs dotted around Gibraltar, giving clear instructions of just how far everything is on foot. So if you're traveling, say, from one side to, to, to the town area, by knowing what time it takes you to walk, you'll actually be, probably be surprised at how little it will take you, and it will let people know if it takes me seven minutes to get from where I want to go to the town center, it's actually better than actually getting in the car, get, going out with the car, trying to um, go find parking. So it's, it's, a, it's an awareness to see the distances, because what we're trying to do is, is promote the 15-minute city which is that uh, you can travel by walking, um, by cycling, or with public transport within any, any part of Gibraltar you can within the 15 minutes. The plan is being rolled out now. After a couple of weeks of consultation with stakeholders, the first cycle lanes will be rolled out. It's expected to take five to ten years to deliver in whole. That is what will give us equality, and then people will be able to choose. Many people tell me, you know, because I, they will stop, they will talk about, have a conversation about bicycles.